told you I was going to climb a tree, but instead I came back to my cave. That is where I'm living under the mounds of the Shire on Danish countryside. So while we're here in the inland, in a comfortable, quiet place, I wanted to tell something about the open fields and the inland, or otherwise, wisdom and trance, as some call them. The Buddhists call them pragya and samadhi. Pragya meaning complete knowing, uh, which means uh, knowing. Pragya is a sort of a theoretical thinking construct. Construct that you do, do in your uh, mind and in your intellect, in your emotive and cognitive. I, in your emotive and cognitive. Shit, this is getting dangerous. Oh my god, <laughs> okay. <laughs> the cave is too dangerous today. There's a crazy bull trying to impale me, so we're taking a walk anyways. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, right. So, when you go into the cave, there are all kinds of dangers in there because the cave is the inner samadhi, the asmita samadhi, the double zero, the subjective self, and the uh, morbid composite that holds uh, material existence together in the uh, ego container, in a manner of speaking. When that resolves, uh, then the mirror of mind is revealed, and when the mirror is revealed, then the mirror can be broken, and consciousness can be liberated from a subjective tangle into an essentially objective fact. But it's, there, there is no objective knowledge as such, but there is an objective uh, exchange. Even if my interfacing with this world may be called subjective, uh, in as much uh, as I interpret it through my uh, personal uh, psychological matrix of volitions, uh, that is the subjective sphere. But when the uh, warped psychology uh, is removed from the uh, continuum, uh, now we have a stasis. As long as the ego is there, a stasis is there, uh, a volitional stasis uh, of craving, attachment, and uh, uh, after effects of the said uh, unwholesome psychological traits. Oh! Not there! He's got some psychological traits I need to still try and tidy up a little bit. Oh! Hey! Always so preoccupied with his sticks. Sticks and stones can break my bones, but you won't steal my camera or something. I don't know what the proverb is. Anyway, we were supposed to be talking about uh, wisdom and trance. I like to call it a concentrance. Insight wisdom and concentrance. To insight wisdom in the open fields you perceive the specific nature of the uh, dharmas or patterns of reality uh, as well as the interdependent continuum of existence that is essentially a systemic equation uh, of variables, uh, of influences, of environments, of entireties that functions all together all influencing each uh, subjective system, each self-contained system, and each uh, extended uh, connected system. You know, I mean, we have all kinds of uh, diagrams and flowcharts and modeling tools nowadays. I mean, just uh, have a look at some of those if you don't have imagination mentally uh, in your visionary space to render 
uh, equation. I mean, you, you should be able to play chess in your mind. You should be able to mix uh, red, green, blue color palettes in your mind into hexadecimal variables and so on if you have a sort of a space uh, in which your computer can operate like a brain uh, with a full uh, visual and cognitive capacity naturally would. Then you can operate uh, instead of dealing with the clunky clustered words, you can operate directly in the phenomena themselves and uh, have phenomena match each other as pairs, as opposites, as complementarities, as sets, as level sets, as horizontal and vertical uh, crosses and uh, octagonal mandalas, uh, pentagons of uh, motion, etc. You can model all kinds of things in your cognitive space, which is the space of your heart mind that is connected with the immanent fabric of nature. As long as you try to cut yourself into half from the middle, from the waist, it's not going to work. You keep your physical fabric, your pussy and your balls and your dick and your uh, nick and whatever in the underworld and then you take your heart and your mind and you take it to the upper world. You don't want to just take a chainsaw and chop yourself with help if you're such a masochist, uh, self-mutilating character. Why not try to get the above and the below together and just try to get the heart mind to experience the transcendence that it seeks in the immanent, uh, that it rests in naturally. The connections are naturally there and your brain likewise is a biological matrix and you use it for all of this uh, so-called spirituality of yours. And when your spirituality doesn't match with the matrix of the brain, then you can have all the goddamn arguments you want and you can say, Tribi Flavi, we are actually ascending to the uh, happy, happy golden moon or whatever and uh, have all sorts of uh, uh, displays of uh, uh, short burst ecstasy and so on that come from all these happy little islands that they jump and touch and fall back down again. I mean, that's their sort of game. It's like a flipper game, bouncing into different islands uh, in the ladder from here to the origination uh, of the universe. There are all kinds of islands on the way, so they are just playing flipper and jumping uh, in there and falling back in without being able to contain those states, without being able to actually work productively with those states in a generalized sphere. What does it mean to work in the fields? Karma Kshetre, Kuru Kshetre, Dharma Kshetre, Kuru Kshetre, Samaveta, Yuyutsa, Vahamama, Kappanda, Vashchaiva, Kima, Kurvata, Sanjaya was the question in the first verse of the Gigawatt Bata. So, anyways, keep getting distracted. Oh! The point I'm making here is that you have wisdom and you have trance. And by wisdom you understand the specific nature of the world out there, first of all. And then by concentration and trance, uh, you begin to experience different levels of subtlety and grossness, uh, height and uh, netherness, and uh, begin to see in more detail with better resolution the fabric of nature that is binding you, uh, is not binding you, you are reaching out to it and therefore it is binding to you, not binding you, it's binding to you in response to your volition. Anyways, so you need to have these two. You need to have the inside wisdom and the concentrance and the inside wisdom and the outside wisdom and the wisdom trance and the knowledge trance together in a unity. Then it is called shila or ethics or true reconciliation of the above and the below, of the inner and the outer, of the self, of the friend, the other, then it becomes a true reconciliation. 
Otherwise, if you go for wisdom and say, let us go and fly on the open fields and transcend and just uh, cut away our legs or something, it's not very wholesome. If you say, let us go and just analyze ourselves within and take apart our inner fabric, that's not really, uh, okay, that's a good thing to do. These are all really, really great things to do, but they are not the end all, be all, and the end all of, uh, of the wholesome process of nature. You gain different grades of resolution along the road, but until every last atom is reconciled, the wedding is not through, so to say. There is a wedding in a parable <coughs> of many, many maidens and of the unified. All the maidens are rotating around the unified that is reflected in infinite forms as the attractor of all the rays of cognitive energy. When I say cognitive, it is heart mind, it is not intellectual or something like that. People always want to say that it's intellectual, but you say they do not see that there is a nature, nature has intelligence, and if you go with nature, then there is intelligence in there, and it's not intellectual, intellectualization or some sort of a, uh, mental gymnastics or intellectual whatever exercises that people are doing. It's simply an expression of the book of life and the book of nature. Like they say, whoever, there is this one guy who was making bacon a couple hundred years ago and he became famous for the, his good cuisine. So he was saying something like that. Like that there is the uh, word, word of God or the book of God and uh, word of nature and the book of nature. Oh, I adding in a little bit, but that's basically his point. Whatever is above has the uh, uncreated word that echoes in the universe from the first moments of the pattern continuum origination. That is the word of God or the pattern of God that dictates uh, all the deri derivative per permutations of existence. That is the word of God uh, when it is heard uh, in part and it is the book of God when it is heard in full. Whoever will hear it in full, but basically that's the idea. The fullness will hear it in full. Fools will not hear anything at all because they're so busy with their volitional desires that they cannot even stop here and ask. The ancient trees are cut. Why are the trees all cut? Three are the trees that are cut. There must be something evil here. Or not, who knows? What are the unbroken trees and the broken trees? What do they stand for if you do not go out into the nature and ask trees and ask the plants and ask the animals what's up and go into them and try to reflect the world through their eyes, then you will be missing. You think you have some wisdom when you have human wisdom. Bullshit. Humans are such a such an insectoid little speck in this totality of awareness. There is so much awareness that far exceeds the human reach. And there is so much awareness that is specified into capacities uh, that far exceed the human reach, even though uh, such creatures may not exceed the total capacity of a human being. So uh, there is so much hubris in this so-called human wisdom that seeks to uh, simply elevate the self in the end. That is uh, BS. BS there is not basic stuff, but BS is bullshit. Bullshit is also basic stuff. You can use it for fertilizing the fields. But uh, uh, I mean, uh, well, I mean, if you like bullshit, then go for it. But uh, but uh, I better like a bull's hit because I'm a verbal conjugator and a conjugal verbator. So bullshit is what comes out of the ass of the bull, and bull's hit is when you take a dart and throw it to the bull's eye. 
Maybe that's when you take the dart and throw it to the bull's eye. Then at the other end, bullshit comes out. Bullshit leads to bullshit. I think there's some sort of a cosmic joke in there. Someone has to be bright and someone has to be dark. Someone Today we got a chance to really concentrate on 